wants to sucker more. You gotta play with tremendous passion and tremendous intensity and focus. This is all about being seen. This is all about being hurt. They want a better opponent. They wanted a higher RPI. Let's get out there and represent this league and show what we want to Bruce Pearl's Panthers want some recognition and respect as Bracket Buster Saturday continues. We welcome you to SIU Arena in Carbondale, Illinois, where the Salukis of Southern Illinois play host the Panthers of the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Conference standings, Wisconsin-Milwaukee all along the top of the Horizon League, and Southern Illinois tied with Creighton, who won earlier today in Bracket Buster over Fresno State at the top of the Missouri Valley Conference. Our star watch... For the Saluki senior point guard, Kent Williams has led the team for four consecutive years in scoring. And for the Panthers, senior forward Clay Tucker, voted by many as preseason player of the year in the Horizon League. Glad to have you with us. I'm Jerry Punch, along with the coach, Bucky Waters, here in Carbondale, Illinois, for Rocket Buster Saturday. This should be a great one, Bucky. Boy, you could cut the intensity in here with a knife. This is uh, These two teams are so pumped to be on national television. I expect it might be a little shaky early, but when they settle down, they're very good basketball teams. Southern Illinois in the maroon and white. They run the motion offense. Gehrman, the big guy, thinks about a shot from outside. They'll set it up again. Penetration inside by Williams. That's their leading scorer for the past four years. How's that for a touch shot? The Panthers of Milwaukee really want to push the ball up the floor. They love to run as much chaos as they can create, the happier they are. Outside shot from beyond the yard. Great effort by Jason Frederick, who leads the conference in three-point baskets. Well, I'd like to point out my uh, prediction about uh, being a little nervous, a little shaky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. They have tough anyway. Harrison with the left hand, can't get it to fall. Dylan Page down with the rebound. Both teams, as you said, like to run. Transition basketball. Penetration, and if Jones will throw it away, Harrison will take it off. The turnover. Terrific help side defense that time by the Salukis. They give away some three-pointers, but it's awfully hard to score on them in the lane. Williams off the glass, can't get it to fall. Penetration inside, Page double pumps, can't get his default. Milky on the rebound. And from outside again. Two from beyond the arc for six points. As Wisconsin-Milwaukee up six to two here early on in Carbondale. Take a look at our starting lineups. There's a look. Uh, three out of five starters for Southern Illinois are seniors. Only two seniors in the starting nine rotation for Southern Illinois. Remember the name Tom Davis, Dr. Tom Davis. Bruce Pearl is a disciple, and his teams are almost replicas of the former coach at Iowa, Boston College, and Stanford, and they love to press. After every score, they will pick up with a big guy on the ball, and Milky at 40 is all over Kent Williams. It's a full of flips. He can't even see the lights to get it out. <laughs> Two coaches, both coaches spend a lot of time and assistance under Big Ten legends. You mentioned Tom Davis, Gene Cady was the mentor for Bruce Weber. Hairston from outside. Hairston from beyond the arc for the Salukis. Bruce Weber extending his defense a little bit, trying to take the Panthers out of their rhythm. Some great matchups here, especially in the backcourt. Tucker's the guy they want to get the ball inside. Nice dish inside to Milky, who will take it off the glass. Big decision now for the Salukis. Do we attack this pressure and try to make them pay for extending their defense and maybe get in too much of an up-and-down game, or do we just break pressure, set up, and do our thing? Right now, Bruce Pearl's very happy with his tempo. There's a second-year coach, Bruce Pearl, 42 years of age. Fastest in coaching history to 200 wins in just 240 games. Broke the record by every case. We'll tell you more about that later. There's uh, Bruce Weber, fifth-year coach at Southern Illinois. 
Spent 18 years under the tutelage of Gene Cady at the Purdue. What's got to be driving uh, Coach Weber are nuts is the way that ball's getting down in the paint. This is a team that takes a great deal of pride in their defense. Early on, Wisconsin, Milwaukee showing a lot on the offensive board. Dearman inside, takes it off the glass. Nice turnaround move. Do not try that one in your driveway unless you have a chiropractor living next door. <laughs> Man. At 6'8", elusive Ely with soft touch off the glass. Jermaine Dearman, the hero of their Sweet 16 run a year ago. Big games over Texas Tech and Georgia as the Panthers throw it away. As they, as they got to the Sweet 16, one of the uh, teams they had to beat was number three seed, Georgia whose mascot is also a dog, a big, ugly bulldog called Uga. And I got to pet a Saluki today, which is kind of a debutante dog. But a pretty dog won in the NCAA. From outside. And the Saluki's having trouble getting their three-point shots to fall. Third most accurate three-point shooting team in the country this year. Trouble on the offensive boards, and uh, very patient now is Wisconsin-Milwaukee offensively. Whistle inside, and they will call that one on Big Josh Warren on the push-off. The Panthers up by five early on here in Carbondale, Illinois. Rocket Buster Saturday continues. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of Bracket Buster Saturday, brought to you by the 200 horsepower Acura RSX Type S. And back in Carbondale, Illinois, Bucky Waters, Bracket Buster Saturday. Don't you love it? I mean, these teams finally get a little bit of respect. It's sort of Rodney Dangerfield Day in college basketball. <laughs> well, they are, and the Panthers visiting from Milwaukee have seven seniors, and they have absolutely jumped on the hose. All my thoughts about them being nervous and a little shaky, <laughs> and they came out smoking. It's been fun to watch. Showing a lot of composure, and got to be a big concern for Bruce Weber not being able to stop the inside penetration by Wisconsin-Milwaukee. As they are up by five, 12 to seven here at SIU Arena in Carbondale. SIU gives up some three point shots. Opponents are shooting 41% against them this year. Ladenberger from outside can't get it to fall. Turner will bring it down. The guards are the primary rebounders for the Salukis of Southern Illinois. They're great athletes, and they go four deep. Inside, great pass to Darren Brooks for the lay-in. Panthers wanting to run, but they can pull it back and play half court. Now that's the defense that the Southern Illinois fans are accustomed to seeing out of their Salukis. Well, their half court defense is very good. The real key for the Salukis is they've got to get back in transition. And if their guards start to penetrate, one of the problems with backcourt penetration is you're vulnerable to the break. Watch them close out here. Terrific job. Absolutely. Turner, Brian Turner, just really clamped them against the baseline. They are, both of these teams take great pride in the D. The whole question in the early going has been tempo. And give the advantage so far to the Milwaukee Panthers. But this is a long game. And it's going to be hard fought to the wire, I think. Veteran consistency, take of games played for the Panthers. 112 games for Jones, Frederick, and Weiss. Clay Tucker missed a couple of games earlier this year with some back spasms. He has 104 starts, second in the career. Record books up at Wisconsin, Milwaukee. It's amazing. You know, all of this year we've been going over to starting lineups and one team starting three freshmen and two sophomores and the other. They've all been youth parades, like daycare centers. And here are the Panthers from Milwaukee with seven seniors on the roster. Oh, amazing. Rare miss inside by Tucker. Now the Salukis want to bring him back and look. And outside the big man, 6'9". But that's his shot. He plays facing the basket primarily. Nice job by uh, 
the Panthers. They come down in that secondary break. Go right, right into their motion. No chance to adjust. Ronnie Jones can't get it to fall. And now the Panthers have gone cold. Here's Williams on the break. And and the whistle the foul and wise for the block. Panther coach Bruce Pearl showing his suspenders on that one. That could have gone either way. This is a tough kid. Ken Williams looks like he hits him right in the chest. That's uh, that block and charge will never ever be easy with athletes of this level. But this one is a block. Ken Williams, he mentioned leading scores, led could become the only player to lead his school four consecutive years in scoring dangerous inbound pass. Warren able to get it back. Tucker nearly with the steal. Panthers very good in that man for man. Harrison's the creator. They go over to Deerman. He will try the short jump shot. Can't get it to drop. Tucker on the rebound. And here come the Panthers in quick transition. Dearman's key today, Jerry. He's been up and down, both scoring and rebounding, and they desperately need his athleticism and size against the Panthers. Wise, the uh, three points, she throws it away, and here's Harrison on the break. It didn't take long for for Coach Bruce Weber to get after his alma mater. He got jumped on 12 to 5, and they're right back in it. Back over the point. Here's Milky inside. Air ball. Misses everything. Weiss on the rebound. He'll be fouled. Let's check back in the studio with Pam Moore. There's the steal by Stetson Hairston and drains it. Although they're not known for being in the passing lane, that time they caught him napping. Weiss made the pass, suspecting a normal fallback defense, and he got picked real good. Substitution, Jose Winston, the transfer in from Colorado. Here's Weiss from outside the arc. A little short. And now the Salukis want to try to get the running game, the transition game going. Yeah, they can do both too, but right now, They've got the Panthers in a half-court game. And that's what the Salukis are all about, controlling tempo today. Williams at over 49% from the arc is deadly from outside. Milwaukee is so dependent on that press, and they've got to score to set it up. So these cold spells really take them out of their rhythm. Nice dish back outside the Weiss is wide open for three. And the press. Milky, 6-11 on the ball. Tough first pass, but they're not staying after it. It's one pass and back. But that'll change. That's another Tom Davisism. They start soft and gradually increase. And Williams will be fouled by Weiss. As Weiss picks up. His second personal foul very quickly here. Boy, he's a tough kid. The hard-nosed gym rat. Only nine turnovers, Jerry, the entire season. So that one, that pick we saw a moment ago as a turnover was a rare occurrence. That's just a hustle play. Five points make it six for Kent Williams, the senior guard. A 72% free throw shooter. Here's Williams out of Mount Vernon, Illinois. And just prior to the game, they brought his parents out. Today is Mount Vernon Day here in Carbondale. It's about an hour north of where we are located, and they've got about 1,200 folks. And they emptied out Mount Vernon, Illinois, and brought them down to Carbondale to watch this young man play. Well, he's worth the trip. You pointed out he's, he's led this team in scoring. He started every game here. He signed early. I chatted with him before the game about, you know, had he maybe gone to a larger school. He said, nope, everything turns out for the best. He wants to be another Stockton. That's the reason he's playing point guard this year. Very Stockton like his ability to penetrate inside the pass, overthrowing Tinder for Tucker. Milwaukee now, not that they're not pressing and running, a little impatient on that half-court offense. Fourth turnover for the Panthers. 
as they are they trail by two. Now very deliberate offense. Gilman facing the basket. He loves television. Had a real coming out party last year in the NCAA. And now the Panthers have gotten cold and changing that way quickly. Jason Frederick, the senior guard out of Waukesha. So look, he's beat the press and then the Panthers drop back off into their half court defense. But again, going back to the philosophy, they press you a little bit. They watch how you attack the press. Right now they're pressing one pass and backing up. It'll get worse. And they will call steps on Sylvester Willis. We have an official. And we'll take time out here with Southern Illinois up by one over the Panthers. Saturday got off to a terrific start. Kyle Korver, 27 points, seven three-pointers, five boards, three assists, two steals. And look at him work free here to knock down this three as Creighton beat Fresno State 67 to 66. Blue Jays have won 24 games. Big win for Northern Iowa down in Ruston, Illinois State leading Marshall right now 45 37 and games yet to come here on ESPN 2 we have Bowling Green Illinois State Hawaii Kent State and Tulsa Gonzaga coming up lots more to come here's Doc Punch and thank you Pam we're back in Carbondale Illinois the um, on the campus of Southern, Southern Illinois the Salukis of Southern Illinois taking on uh, University of Wisconsin Milwaukee And they wanted steps here in the crowd, didn't get it. Nice fake. <laughs> nice head fake by Tucker. They just joined our coverage. Milwaukee went up 12-7 early. And then the Salukis of Southern Illinois came back on a 9-0 run. And now lead it by a point. And Josh Warren will pull it down for Southern Illinois. A lot more starch in the Southern Illinois half-court defense now. Milwaukee having a hard time getting the three and getting to the paint. They desperately need to score and get that press rhythm. Whistle, they will call the foul on Hairston. His first. Good shot there. Bruce Pearl, who is a legend in Southern Indiana, Division II, and just has the Panthers on fire in Milwaukee. Much love, much respect. It had a great, great first year. Coach of the year. Just uh, it's almost one of those things where what do yeah. you do for an encore? It's been marvelous. 2002 Horizon League Coach of the Year. He has 21 wins this year. Third winning his team in the 107-year history of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hairston, the one-handed jumper. Yeah, with the University of Wisconsin Badgers and the Marquette Warriors, they've got three very good Division I teams up in that state. And the vast majority of his players are from the state of Wisconsin. At all three schools, indeed. Block inside, great block by Josh Warren on Milky. And a near steal, and they will get the ball. They tap it away, and Harrison the last to touch it. Rocket Buster Saturday continues on ESPN 2 at 5 Eastern time. Bowling Green meets Illinois Chicago. Then at 9.30, Hawaii travels east to take on Kent State. And at midnight on ESPN, it's Tulsa at Gonzaga. NCAA basketball, Rocket Buster Saturday on ESPN and ESPN 2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. They Milwaukee are. just two of ten, excuse me, Bucky, in their last ten from the field. They are two of ten from the field. They have gone cold shooting from outside. Whoa. Oh, and, oh, oh, as I say that, Dylan, Dylan Page. Dylan right. Page, six feet eight, showing his touch from out there. Showing the nice shooting touch for the big touch. What is this, horse? Looks like the big guys are playing. Can you top this? Bruce Weber's over there saying, look, I want you guys to get down in the paint. I want to get to the free throw line. I want to get some fouls on these guys. Inside, great toss by Frederick. Can't get it to fall. Well, Jason Frederick really made a great pass. He just couldn't finish. 
Hairston trying to penetrate, nearly throws it away. Deerman on the dribble will try to save it. It's taken away by Frederick. These two teams playing like it's a national championship, yeah, leaving nothing. They really are. You look out there, those pupils are dilated, the nostrils are distended. And I'm not talking about the mascot dog. I'm talking about the players. They are pumped. Very nice, right on the money. But after hitting that three, he took too much out of Page. He couldn't finish. It was a great pass. Five turnovers for each team, stifling defense. Both these teams specialize in tough man-to-man -to -man confrontational defense. Here's Jones, the little guy penetrating. He throws it away. Again, that good help side defense. They really smother you down in the paint. They want you to beat them from three first. Willis on the turnaround tries to dish it back out. And it'll be Saluki basketball. We have an official timeout. Well, Silver Illinois up by two. Early on, we've got a great one here in Carbondale. And we are back in Carbondale, Illinois for a bracket buster Saturday. Wisconsin Milwaukee trailing by a couple over the host Salukis of Southern Illinois. Looking at Texas Tech, that was one of the early victims. Uh, uh, well, first round victim last year in the NCAA. Wisconsin-Milwaukee, founded in 1885. It's their very first national television appearance. They have never been in the postseason in NIT or NCAA. They have never won a conference title in men's basketball. However, Southern Illinois, well, they have five appearances in the big dance, including last year's Sweet 16 season. As I mentioned, Texas Tech is the first victim, and then they beat number three seed Georgia to get to the Sweet 16 where the, the Huskies of Illinois of uh, Connecticut eliminated them and we remember Jim Calhoun who's back in the office pestering people but not coaching it recovering from his prostate cancer surgery. Indeed uh, Rob Sanders who just entered the basketball game Sanders coming off a dislocated shoulder early in the season was fouled inside it'll be Milwaukee basketball. Page can't get it to fall. And Milwaukee has gone cold from the field. They've been hot from three-point range, but inside the arc, they are three of 11. That's where that Southern Illinois defense gets tough. Doubling up on Williams. Brooks trying to penetrate. Both teams effective in the man-to-man -man defense. And they're going to have a push-off inside. Push-off on Willis. Big money presented by Bud Light. Highlighted by two great ball games, 7 o'clock Eastern time. The surging Notre Dame Fighting Irish hosting the Connecticut Huskies. Then at 9 o'clock, Bobby Knight's Texas Tech Red Raiders take on Andre Williams and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. All part of Judgment Week presented by Cisco Systems. Ted Williams, a little fire rallying those 1,200 fans from Mount Vernon, Illinois. Well, and they called a touch foul on Kent Williams, and it is not a very popular call here in this building, particularly on Mount Vernon Day. <laughs> Frederick, he's the designated outside shooter. Page, their leading scorer. Tucker. Great denial in the paint. Frederick with a great head fake out to Tucker, and he will fake the shot. Double pump off the glass. Boy, that was a tough sequence. Everybody flying at the shooters, but the shooters had control, good fakes, and finally got what they wanted off glass. Seven points for Tucker thus far here in the first half. Corey from outside. And the big fella, six foot nine inches, nails the three. <laughs> He's pretty tough inside with left and right hand, and that three-point shot for a 6'9 guy is a handful for 6'3 guards. 
I'm Jerry Punch, along with Bucky Waters. Glad to have you with us here in Carbondale, Illinois. Racket Buster Saturday, black and gold is Wisconsin, Milwaukee, the maroon and white is Southern Illinois, the Salukis. A one-point basketball game. SIU out of the Missouri Valley Conference, Wisconsin, Milwaukee out of the Horizon League. Williams again on the pull-up jumper. There's that Stockton imitation again, under control, pull-up J, does it all. Kent Williams was a two guard until this season. And uh, by uh, consent with coach Bruce Weber, he's moved over to the point guard spot. He's taking fewer shots, but he certainly is efficient and he continues to lead this team in scoring. Williams second in the MVP voting last year in the Missouri Valley Conference to Kyle Corver, who had a pretty good day earlier on ESPN2 for Blue Jays of Creighton, who were able to win their game by a point over Fresno State. Take a look at the shooting there. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, five of nine from beyond the arc. Penetration by Jones. And Korn will bring down the rebound. Boy, that three inspired his rebounding, which is not his forte. Dearman from outside. Oh, he's in and out. He gets two or three shots of getting that one in. Well, you NASCAR guys, you like that victory lap, don't you? <laughs> we just had one. One celebration around the hoop. And a foolish over-the-back <laughs> foul by a fired-up Jermaine Dearman. Dearman just had a tattoo added after his great performance in the NCAA last year where he averaged 19 points and nine boards. And Bruce Weber's trying to say, think, please, think. But anyway, he had a tattoo added to his arm. It says, big game Jermaine. And it's just above one depicting him dunking the ball. So uh, this guy, uh, if he isn't in business, he ought to be. He's a marketing expert. Hopefully, the Saluki fans think he'll back it up. Nate Milkey at the line. He has uh, two points in the day. He misses the uh, first of two. And Wisconsin Milwaukee struggling offensively. Again, Corn will try the outside. He gets nipped a little bit inside on the rebound. Great follow by Darren Brooks, the red shirt sophomore. I, did that catch iron just barely, didn't it? It didn't? It may have just scared the paint off. Yeah, it looked like that Darren. Yeah, in the NCAA Finals, a 43-footer right on the money. And they're going to call Hairston on the shove here on Lettenberger. Second personal foul on Stetson Hairston. Again, coming right at these shooters. Here's Korn at 6'9", coming off. Ah, oh, that was just a little nudge. That was a Missouri Valley nudge. Not big. I remember just even when I was a kid, the Missouri Valley, with all of these conferences changing names and teams, that was a great league. Justin Lettenberger, 76% free throw shooter. As Milwaukee now one of two from the charity strike. As intense as the defense has been, there haven't been many free throws. Five-point game here in Carbondale. The Saluki's up 32-27. Back in just a moment. By eight, Doc. And back in Carbondale, Illinois. Bracket Buster Saturday continuing as the Horizon League representative, Milwaukee, takes on the Missouri Valley Conference of Southern Illinois team. Nice movement here by the Panthers of Milwaukee. Showing the ball, drawing the defense, flying by, and finally, with a little giddy up and a little hitch, Billy Taylor puts, a, puts the ball in off the glass. He's the leading scorer for Milwaukee with seven points, and he can put it in from anywhere. Post up, three points, and that nice little pull up. He's the whole package is Tucker. And with a dead ball, here comes the press. Seven different players have scored for Milwaukee as they go full court. Typical Dr. Tom Davis type teachings. Bruce Pearl as they try to beat the press. And here comes Dearman up 
and there's Southern Illinois. Yeah, Jerry, and there's more options coming on that press. We're still in the first half. That one has 99 segues. You got to solve them all. Five point basketball game. And just joining our coverage, Maroon and White, Southern Illinois. A nice inside pass to Darren Brooks. Boy, the big guy passing, rebounding, shooting. How'd you like to reach on the bench, coaches, and pick up a 6'9 guy to give you a trifecta? Frederick penetrating. He will throw it away. It is kicked. Well, Sunday, Michael Jordan and the Washington Wizards host Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks. Coverage begins at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, NBA Sunday on ABC. We've got hoops. Everybody trying to put Michael Jordan in a wheelchair at 40. They better put some racing stripes on it. There are a lot of hoops left in that guy. No doubt about that. Oh. See the shove inside on Milky. That's his first. Milky was off the ball. He's normally covering that guy on the baseline. Again, soft pressure by the Panthers of Milwaukee. Dearman going up, loses it. The Milky will bring it down. Nice outlet pass to Page. Steps, turns around, can't get it up, and now it's blocked from behind. A great block by Josh Ward from behind. It'll be Milwaukee basketball up. Oh, my. Milwaukee fans may be replaying that one. Look at this great hustle. A terrific pass. Page takes his time, lets the defense go by. So, oops, oops. Great pursuit that time. Off balance shot by Page, lost out. It'll be to the Illinois ball. No press at all. Yes, here it comes. Dylan Whoa. Page struggling just two of seven from the field. Boy, that was a great defensive stand, though, for Southern Illinois. They had their backs against the wall with a breakaway, they, two misses. Just, uh, they really collected in there and coughed it up. Warren on the turnaround, can't get it to fall. Largest lead of the game thus far, seven points for Southern Illinois. And the jump, the possession arrow will favor Milwaukee. Both of these teams, backcourts, very athletic, good rebounders. Tucker off the inbound pass. And the Panthers have gone cold from the field. Just one of the last eight inside, still can't get it to fall. Make it one of nine for Milwaukee. Coach Bruce Pearl can't get those guys any closer than that. They're teething on the rim. They missed two layups their last three times down the court. And the margin is seven. Final minute and 40 seconds in the first half. Williams can't get it to drop either. And it'll be Saluki basketball. Coming up at halftime, Korber crushes Fresno State. What a day for Kyle Korber. And Creighton, number 12, Marquette, TCU. That's all coming up in a minute and 33 seconds. More momentum right now. We're in maroon and white. Our Avis halftime report coming up in a minute and 22. Again, the transition, and it will call the block on Winston. Transition it is. Ryan Turner. Again, the benefit of the call. Good defense, good offense. Call goes to the Red Hot Salukis of Southern Illinois. Second personal foul for Jose Winston, the transfer from Colorado. As Dearman takes a seat, they will bring the big 6'9 Corn back in, who had been hot from outside. One of the things Bruce Pearl is going to have to address is the ease with which Southern Illinois has been able to break them down off the dribble, getting deep inside. Ladies, keep, keep it cool. Good shot there. Hey, guys. 
We're down. Uh, we're down uh, nine. That's all right. Uh, the good news is there's a lot of time. We can. We can come back. Well, Rocket Buster Saturday, a one-day, nine-game men's basketball event matching potential NCAA tournament hopefuls. And coming up later today, Bowling Green taking on University of Illinois Chicago, 5 Eastern time. Hawaii takes on Kent State, 9.30 on ESPN2. And then at midnight Eastern time, Tulsa and Gonzaga. For more, log on to ESPN.com. And some news and notes from the Bracket Busters thus far today. We mentioned that Creighton won in a great game over Fresno State. Kyle Korver, nine first place teams participating. And nine have or could clinch 20 regular season wins. Of course, Milwaukee here has 21 wins in this game. 18 wins for Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois has the advantage here, too. They got the home court plus. The, a lot of big games that experience in the NCAA tournament and getting to the Sweet 16 is invaluable even though Milwaukee has seven seniors that's tremendous successful experience for Southern Illinois two extremely well coached basketball teams here final minute and ten seconds of the first half and that one taken away by Frederick and he will launch the three and they're gonna call the foul the push inside on Justin Lettenberger of Milwaukee. Nothing going right right now for Milwaukee. Nothing. There's a long pass. Terrific interception that time. Gets a piece, decides not to go into the paint. Watch it. This is beyond the NBA range. Jason Frederick, who's a terrific three-point shooter at 41%, went with the money ball and didn't hit. And fourth point of the day for this young man, Brad Korn, redshirt junior out of Oswego, Illinois. Coaches at Southern Illinois wanted him to redshirt for his first year. He said, no, I can do it. At the start of the second year, he said, redshirt me. The margin, 11 points, Bucky, here in the final minute of the first half as Milwaukee has gone over four minutes and 20 seconds without a basket. They haven't been able to get in the press because they've been cold. Inside the page, the head fake, and he gets it swatted away. A 10-second differential on the shot clock. And from the side, yeah, nothing but net for Stetson Harrison. That one ought to be on Sports Center. Great penetration, draw the defense, kick, swing. Splash. Inside the Lettenberger, and finally Milwaukee gets on the board. Their first bucket in almost five minutes. That ends a 9 nothing run by Southern Illinois. Final seconds of the first half. Who else but Williams on the side? Can't get it to fall. And we are at halftime here in Carbondale, Illinois. With Southern Illinois up 41-29 over Milwaukee. Now let's go back to our halftime studio and Pam Moore. Thank you very much, Dr. Jerry. As we get ready for the Avis halftime report, Southern Illinois showing there. They certainly were no fluke as they went to the Sweet 16 last season. A very impressive end to that first half. Coming up on the Avis halftime report, in the Avis halftime report. And back in Carbondale, we were at halftime where Southern Illinois is up 41-29 over Milwaukee. And just a moment ago, Bruce Pearl talked to his Milwaukee troops in the locker room. Here's what he had to say. Hey, 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 test of our character. Test of our character. That's a Sweet 16 team out there from last year on their home floor. On their home floor. We're going to find out right now what kind of substance we got. We're going to find out right now what we made of. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Bucky, as a coach, you've been there. You're telling them they're testing your character. You've got 21 wins. You've won eight in a row, 10 of the last 11, but you're down by 12 on their floor. Well, he's reminding them that they had won at Butler first time ever. He's also saying that this team had Creighton down 12 at the half at Creighton, and Creighton came back and beat them by nine. 
So he's setting a stage there of belief. Plus, with the press and run, if they can get some baskets, they can get back into their press and run rhythm, and Milwaukee can score points in a hurry. And there's a big surprise on the field goal percentage for Milwaukee, 36% in the first half. They're shooting almost 48% on the year. And Southern Illinois, 55%. Points in the paint, big differential there. The Salukis have the advantage. The Panthers jumped out 12 to 5, and then from then on, it was all Southern Illinois. 36 to 17 it was after the first four minutes. So they got off the deck, did the Salukis, and they're still in gear. Nice give and go to Willis inside. He'll be fouled and will shoot a couple. Milwaukee's biggest lead was 12 to 7. They had a five point lead, and then, then it became Southern Illinois run after run after run and poor shooting toward the end of the half. A four and a half minute drought by Milwaukee, and thus the 12 point halftime advantage. A good antidote for pressure. Milwaukee came out in tough half court pressure and immediately got the backdoor treatment. Sylvester Willis, 6'7". Good nine inches in just a short time. That's good coaching, Bruce Weber. <laughs> <laughs> Off the back of the iron. And let's see if that challenge by Bruce Pearl at halftime will pay off for Milwaukee here in the first few minutes. Inside penetration, great soft touch for Ronnie Jones. Better than Illinois, not waiting for the press that time, just got it in bounds. Right now, Milwaukee a half a step behind. They need to get that press going. And in order to do that, they got to score. I know it's redundant, but it's what gives them breath. Nice challenge. And that's what Jermaine Dearman did so well in the run last year in the tournament for the Sweet 16. Challenge the big men in the paint. Big game, Jermaine. And this is a big game. Frederick will throw it away, and another turnover. It'll be Saluki basketball. This was not the start Bruce Pearl wanted coming out here on the road in the second half. Yesterday, we watched Bruce Weber in practice here on this court with the Southern Illinois basketball team working on denying penetration in the paint. That's what they've been doing for most of this game is Milwaukee cannot get inside at all with the basketball. And then they went cold from the three, but uh, there's a lot of minutes to be played yet, Joe. And this, again, the Panthers are explosive. Follow the play. And they will call the hold inside on the big fella, the leading scorer for Milwaukee. Dylan Page. His first of the day. Almost a non-factor in the first half with Page at five points. Averaging almost 19 a game. He has been shut out. As we said, we just joined our coverage. Shooting less than 36% in the first half was Milwaukee, where as they will call that block. And a good call against Ronnie Jones, who stepped in front of Williams. Milwaukee has yet to get one of these block charge calls. And uh, that one brought uh, Coach Bruce Pearl right up out of his suspenders. He needs a break right now. He's not getting it. Now, these are Horizon League officials, and Milwaukee plays in the Horizon League, so. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he can't give them that typical line about <laughs> we were strangers, and they took us in. It uh, doesn't work, huh? Uh -uh, not when they're your refs. Back out the Brooks from the arc. And they throw it away again. Great interception by Darren Brooks. And the rest of the turnaround. A 14-point Southern Illinois lead. Sylvester Willis is the best leaper, the strongest inside player, but sometimes he struggles to finish. But it is true, he grew nine inches in 18 months. All of a sudden, he became a power player. And there's Page inside. He cannot get it to fall. It's swatted away. And here comes Williams. Everything falling Southern Illinois' way. Willis will out of his range. Turns it again and heads for the basket. Dish inside. Nice pass to Darren Brooks. 
Eight points for Brooks, the redshirt sophomore out of St. Louis. Right now, it's not the offense of Southern Illinois. It's great instinctive basketball. They're just making big plays. That's the lead back to 14. Harrison decides to pull it up, run their offense. Off balance shot by Harrison, ill advised. And I think Bruce Pearl would like to get out and go more. That time, uh, he got the long rebound. Uh, Weiss in the backcourt, not even looking to run. And when that backcourt penetrates, as Southern Illinois has, they're vulnerable to the break. Oh, my. And they are sealing off Page and Town. Here's Willis trying to go coast to coast. This is it out to Harrison. And they are shutting off Milwaukee's inside game. They cannot get the ball to Page. And that block by Frederick. Now we'll see if Milwaukee can get the run game going. And it's kicked away by Williams. Well, coming up, we'll take a look back at Southern Illinois' magical run in last year's NCAA tournament against Texas Tech and won Bobby Knight. Pam, Xavier just getting by Dayton by a point. As uh, we wish we had uh, that close a game here right now, it's 14 points as Southern Illinois pull it over Milwaukee. These two teams very close in their RPI ratings. Milwaukee coming in at 21 and 5, alone atop the Horizon League standings. They've still got to play Butler at Butler next Saturday, and they have struggled offensively here in this one. Milwaukee is still a half a step slow on that defense, not nearly as intense as it was when they were off to that 12-7 run. They've got to get that juice back. Bruce Weber's bunch trying to be very deliberate on their offense, and they throw it away. Bracket Buster Saturday continues on ESPN2 at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Bowling Green meets Illinois Chicago at 9.30. Hawaii travels eight to take on Kent State. At midnight on ESPN, it's Tulsa at Gonzaga. So a lot of games yet to come your way here on Bracket Buster Saturday. Southern Illinois with that tough half-court defense just keeps pushing the Panthers of Milwaukee further and further out. A rare offensive rebound. Nice follow by Justin Lettenberger on the missed shot. Cutting the margin back to 12. This is where it was at halftime. Southern Illinois went on spurts of 9-0, 5-0, 6-0, 9-0. It was very much a game of spurts, unfortunately, for Milwaukee. Theirs was early and few. So Mr. Willis and Braddock Ford replacing That ball Ford. kicked out of bounds. I'll reset the uh, shot clock back to 35. Now, Milwaukee has been a second-half team much of this year. In fact, uh, against Illinois Chicago, they were down by eight at halftime and came out and shot 61% in the second half. They scored 50 points in the second half against Youngstown State last Saturday, so they are not immune or not... A stranger to having to get it done in the second half. Williams on the penetration. Great defense inside by Milky and company. Here comes Milwaukee. And they will call the block inside. The basket will count, and Milky will shoot from the line. One of the few times Southern Illinois has not been back in transition, and they paid for it. The big man runs the floor, and he scores. Nate Milky, 6'11". Really, really running the floor. They, uh, they kidding me. Say he's a right-handed Kevin McHale. I, uh, I think that's a stretch, but he is big and he is lanky. And off the front of the iron, it was touched. And it'll be Milwaukee basketball. Much to Bruce Pearl's delight. Wow, did you see that yellow suit behind the coach there? Whoa! Oh. Yeah, that's uh, that's Tony Jones. We'll tell you about his wardrobe in just a moment. Assistant coach over there. He will tone him down a little bit. But, yeah. That one a little shy. All the batteries are in in that one today. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I got my shades on here. Maybe he can put some juice in this team. It's 10. 10 point margin. It was 16 a minute and a half ago, and now it's back to 13. Look at that face and an angelic assassin. He just quietly puts that dagger right in you. Jones all the way for two. 
Now here comes the press. And they're going to call the foul inside the whistle. And they're calling down on the big fella, Milky. Which Bruce Pearl can't understand. He's uh, giving the palms up to the official. Four personal foul on the big guy. But Bruce Weber of Southern Illinois talks about the similarity in Milwaukee and Creighton in this league. They're the only teams we see that press like that and zone so much. Uh, they're really very similar, so they're helping us to get ready for the second game against Creighton this year. But he doesn't want to get ready with a close call or a loss. They called the personal foul on Dylan Page. Nice inbounds pass. Nice release pass to Turner. And he can't get it to fall. Great attack of the press. Took it to the basket, just couldn't finish. Tucker double teamed out front. And got Weiss in, he's the designated three-point shooter. There's Weiss from beyond the arc. Three-point basket for team Dan Weiss. This crowd's been hollering, let out the dogs, where the Panthers are uh, just about to get out of the pen here. They need a break. Wisconsin Milwaukee battling back. They've cut the margin in half. It was 16 early in the second half, and it's down to eight. Again, a reminder the Salukis had a 12 point pad at half at Creighton and ended up being outscored in the second half by 17 and lost. And not, that's the kind of luck Milwaukee had in the first half. They couldn't get shots to fall. Here's Tucker. Dish inside the page. Omar is now wearing black and gold. And I think Bruce, the suit did it. Jerry, I think the gold suit did it. I think <laughs> Bruce Weber says we got to talk this one over. Something is wrong here on our own floor. Back in just a moment. And Rocket Buster Saturday continues. Six-point game now here in Carbondale. Getting closer and closer. Now let's turn back the clock to January 18th. Southern Illinois at 13th ranked Creighton in the Omaha Civic Auditorium. Saluki's led by eight at halftime. But here comes Kyle Korver and Creighton storming back with 48 second-half points. And the Blue Jays get it done with an 85-76 win back in January. Dr. Punch, you got shots for that blue stuff, don't you there? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, still looking body paint. Whoa, no, <laughs> I mean to cure it. <laughs> Bruce Weber called the timeout to try to settle down his Southern Illinois basketball team. That has been uh, subjected to a 13-3 run by Milwaukee. There is Ehrman inside. Went right to Jermaine. Bruce Pearl with a smaller lineup, quicker lineup inside. The that whistle inside. Foul's at 23, Jermaine Deerman, Deerman second. And that foul, foul on Deerman will second be his second. Both teams coming out of that timeout, going down to the and inside. Dylan Page, Dylan Page is averaging 18 a game. Struggling, although he's rebounding well, he has not scored. And Tucker has been silent as well. Only the 10th point of the day for Dylan Page. You mentioned 18 and a half points a game. Also the leading rebounder. Top 10 of the nation from the field coming into this game shooting 63%. Of course, they have struggled because of this great Southern Illinois defense. Absolutely. Bruce Pearl said we've got four double-figure scores, but we got to have it from Page and we got to have it from Tucker. And today they have it. We've got a good one going on here in Carbondale. Back with more in just a moment. Jerry? And we are back in Carbondale, Illinois, where it is a six-point basketball game. Here's Southern Illinois trying to alone and trying to extend one of the longest home court winning streaks in the country, 24 consecutive games. Oklahoma, Western Kentucky, and Duke, the only three that have home court win streaks longer than these folks here, the Salukis. And Butler, whom we've mentioned uh, a few times today, uh, played in Durham uh, this year and with 
gave a remarkable performance. Uh, took the Blue Devils right to the wire. Bracket Buster Saturday. These two teams trying to generate some interest from the NCAA Selection Committee. Of course, Southern Illinois made it to the Sweet 16 a year ago. Milwaukee has never been to postseason play. Women battling inside the rebound. Gets it again. And they will call the jump inside. Position there will favor Milwaukee. Coming up, Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Highlighted by two great ball games at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Surging Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish host the Connecticut Huskies. And at 9 o'clock Eastern, Bobby Knight. Texas Tech Red Raiders take on Andre Williams and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It's all part of Judgment Week presented by Cisco Systems on ESPN and ESPN2. Talking about Dearman's tattoo, Chris Thomas of, of uh, Notre Dame, the great point guard, has one on his arm, says, stop me if you can, and not many have. Frederick can't get that shot to fall. That would have been huge for Milwaukee. There we go, the momentum, this, this playing field's level again. It was all Southern Illinois there for a while, and the black and gold have made a nice comeback. They've got to sustain it. Southern Illinois was up 47-31, a 16-point lead at the 17-minute and 45-second mark of the second half. And then Milwaukee went on a 13-3 run, and they have narrowed the margin to six points. That call inside the foul on Jose Winston, his third. I, that smile says, I'm not happy, but my PR agent says, don't show your true feelings. I don't know what he's unhappy about. His guy's going to the line. And he wins it out. A 75% free throw shooter. Thirty-five from the line, forty-seven from three. Good touch for the lefty. Saw Bruce Weber a moment ago. His success here, phenomenal at Southern Illinois. He had a couple of chances to leave here last year and opted to stay put. Well, the word is that uh, Gene Cady hates to hear this about when he retires, but. Weber was his assistant for 18 years, and it just kind of assumed. Oh, what? Now the breaks. That was a deflected ball, not a great pass. And the breaks are going the Panthers' way. I'm surprised that they're not digging into that press more. Eight points for Lettenberger. And Milwaukee trying to claw back here, increasing the intensity defensively. That tie-up will give the basketball, though, back to Southern Illinois. Jerry, that was right on. Claude is, boy, they're just in Number there after everything. Who's Pearl, the assistant to Tom Davis? And Iowa, when very familiar with, uh, with the Purdue mentality, and Gene Cady and Bruce Weber, these two guys know each other and their schemes well. A four-point basketball game, the closest the margin has been since late in the first half. Southern Illinois desperately needs it over the back. They will uh, actually call the foul inside as Tucker goes up for the rebound on the shove by Josh Warren. Warren just kind of eased him out of there. Looking at the fouls, though, Milwaukee has committed six. The Saluki's only three. And we're under 10. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, very dangerous when you let them hang into the basketball game. Page. Locals wanted steps on Dylan Page. Didn't get it. He misses the shot. Here comes Hairston on the transition. He can't get it to fall, and Hairston will be called for the foul. Whew. Hairston just really out of control that time. He's like the lead bowler in an avalanche. He blew down there, just missed a couple of black jerseys, but couldn't miss the last one. We are in. Carbondale, Illinois, SIU Arena, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, taking on Southern Illinois. Bracket Buster Saturday continuing. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Bucky Waters. Glad to have you with us. What a great idea. But I, kudos to ESPN's program department, Burke Magnuson Company, on this Bracket Buster theory. And 
They will call the goaltend inside. You shake your head. Well, I, it was close. Uh, you know, I, all, my, why I'm shaking my head is that the whole, the, every break, every close call now is going Milwaukee's way. And give them credit. I mean, they didn't, they weren't walking on their lip and pouting while everything went the other way. But the tables have turned here a little bit. You heard Bruce Paul at halftime. They challenged you. You're on their floor. They were a sweet 16 team a year ago. They've had it. We won it. Talking about postseason. Look at this. Look at this. Loose ball rebound near midcourt. That's when the luck's going your way. A chance to tie it or take the lead for the first time since early in the ball game. Jones inside it. Five nine off the glass. Uh, Smallest man on the floor ties it up for Milwaukee. That ball was high enough to hit a duck or something. I mean, it was straight up. The airport's looking around saying, where'd that come from? Where'd that come from? <laughs> but it was either that or eat it. Boy, he was in traffic. An 8-0 run by the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and they have tied it up here with 8.16 to go. And Bruce Weber says, we have got to talk it over. Not liking at all the fact that they are not getting much offense on the Salukis into the court. And again, going back to that game where they were in command against bitter rival Creighton and let it slide away. Uh, don't think those kids aren't thinking about that. Southern Illinois hasn't lost many in the last couple of years, and those losses are indelible. So one of the things he has to do in this timeout is remove that failure memory and get him back on a, a very positive note. Take a look at their tournament resume. Uh, overall record, 18 and 5 coming in. Their conference record, 13 and 2. They are tied with uh, Creighton atop the Missouri Valley Conference. RPI rating 68. And take a look at Wisconsin Milwaukee. 21 and 5. Third best record in the 107 years of college basketball. Great job by Bruce Pearl and company. Conference record 12 and 2. They sit alone atop the conference in Horizon League. Oh my, oh my, assistant coach Tony Jones that Bruce Pearl recruited from Toledo. He got that suit out of the closet of Lafayette Scribbling, the coach at Mississippi Valley State. He says, I'm wearing it on Bracket Buster Sunday. And I think he's got the batteries in it, everything. <laughs> you, you look good in a suit like that, Dr. Now, Pence. I got one. Mine's purple. <laughs> He got it early in the year and was going to save it specifically for this game, this bracket buster Saturday. The gold pinstripes getting it done here for Milwaukee as they have tied it up. Well, if you've ever seen Lafayette scribbling in Mississippi Valley State, that seat is one of his conservative ones. First basket for Southern Illinois in four minutes and three seconds. Inside and swatted away by Dearman. I don't know what Bruce Weber said in that timeout he called, but on two possessions, it's worked. A great reject, return to Senda, and a three. Turner, that's his range. Across to Williams, who will penetrate. And Dearman in heavy traffic, falling off balance, puts it up for two. 12 points for Jermaine Dearman. One of the problems for Southern Illinois is that Milwaukee has dominated the boards this half. 17 to five. That gives them a lot of second chances and no second chances for the Salukis. And from outside, ice water in those veins. Well, he's the main man. And again, good job by uh, Southern Illinois defense has kept Tucker quiet today. Dearman from the corner. Can't get it to fall. Not his shot. Get back in the lane where you've been effective, big fella. Willis on the penetration. They want to get the ball to Williams. He has it in his hands for two. Uh, just that angelic face. Never, you know, it was like an Eagle Scout out there. Angelic assassin. Seems like he sticks it in your heart every time you think you got something going. Sanders has it swatted away. Here comes Turner. And they're going to call a technical foul. They're going to tee up 
the suit or the coach? Well, I'm not sure if they call it on the color of the suit or on the coach, but they, they pointed toward the Milwaukee bench and Bruce Pearl. But you know what? The technical on the bench, they're going to lose the possession. But Southern Illinois really had the numbers. I mean, they had to steal in the midcourt, and we're about to convert with numbers. So, in, in a way, uh, you know, I'd be disappointed if I were Bruce Weber and that they denied my team the chance to uh, take advantage of that. However, can not get the ball back. Ken Williams misses the first one. He's a 72% free throw shooter. He had made 13 in a row, and now makes one of two to extend the lead to five points. So off the technical foul, Southern Illinois up by five with just over six minutes to play. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of Bracket Buster Saturday, brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. It was a memorable year for the Salukis here a year ago. They headed to the Sweet 16, 28 victories for Bruce Weber's bunch. The 11 seed Salukis met Bob Knight's Red Raiders in the first round last year's NCAA up at the United Center in Chicago. They pulled off the upset, then two days later would upset Jim Herrick's Georgia Bulldogs and would be on their way to the Sweet 16 for the second time in school history. What a year for Southern Illinois. It was Karan Butler and a fine Connecticut team that finally took him out, but it was a great run. Ken Williams said he was doing a post-game radio interview after the win over Texas Tech, and he said Bob Knight came up, slapped him on the back, said, I need players like you. Nice compliment. Bobby Knight came all the way out in the lobby of the United Center to find that young man right there who just took the shot to congratulate him on playing a great ball game. Classy effort by Bobby Knight. Doesn't usually get congeniality awards, but he respects players like Kent Williams. Five-point lead here. We've had a 16-point lead to begin the second half by Southern Illinois. Milwaukee raced back and tied it up. And the Salukis have pulled back out by five. Jones for three. Three-point basket five, uh, uh, Ronnie Jones. Uh, and a chance to press. Very passive, however. Bruce Pearl not pulling the trigger on double teams all the way back. It's just a nuisance press. I think he just likes the way it's going right now and doesn't want to rock the boat. Newman, not his shot from outside. Uh, Ill advised, and now Milwaukee has a chance to tie. Southern Illinois has guys that can do that better than you, big fella. Lettenberger across from Milky, turned around with the hook. Uh, we'd like to have that one over. Nice little jump shot he had. Made something easy very hard. But what a game he's given the Panthers of Milwaukee. Horizon League leaders at 21 and 5. Wisconsin, Milwaukee down by two on Southern Illinois' home floor. Under four and a half to play. Racket Buster Saturday. Jones who penetrates inside. And foul will be called on Deerman. Foul on 23, Jermaine Deerman. Deerman third for Bracket Buster Saturday continues on ESPN2, 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Bowling Green takes on Illinois, Chicago at 9.30. Hawaii travels east to take on Kent State. Then at midnight on ESPN, it's Tulsa at Gonzaga. NCAA bas bra basketball Bracket Buster Saturday on ESPN and ESPN2. Time Twister Saturday. <laughs> been that kind of day. A lot of, lot of uh, ruckus behind that bench. Uh, some of the Illinois students looking a little bit like Cameron there. Well, a big win for the uh, Blue Devils on Wednesday night against Maryland. Mike Krzyzewski's bunch. Nathan Milkey, his favorite show, Sports Center. <laughs> that's his, that's his hope. Pick. His hope, I would like to be on Sports Center someday to the media guy. Nice young man, but he rolls one off. He had a chance to tie it up here with four minutes to play. Oh, 
almost throwing it away. Williams now trying to penetrate. This is it back out to Hairston off the mark. Oh, a dangerous save. A very dangerous save. But again, over this run, it's been Milwaukee getting the breaks. Inside to Lettenberger. Nice pass to Milky, and he is fouled. Great interior passing that time by Milwaukee. Maybe one pass too many. All of a sudden, the black jerseys are getting down in the paint. Nice pass. Another nice pass. And the big fella, Milky, taking it up and in, and he is not their best free throw shooter at 53%. That one clanks off the front of the iron. So they've missed two free throws in a row, two chances to tie this one up. I think if uh, Bruce Pearl had his brothers, he'd like for Clay Tucker to make that play instead of giving it up. And he rolls it in. And we are all tied up here with 3.38 to play in Carbondale, Illinois, in a 60 apiece. Back in a moment. SPN, yeah. Awesome. Racket Buster Saturday here in Carbondale, Illinois. We are tied up for the sixth time today, 60 apiece. That man there at halftime gave an incredible speech, and his team did have responded. Hey, 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 test of our character. Test of our character. That's a sweet 16 team out there from last year on their home floor. On their home floor. We're going to find out right now what kind of substance we got. We're going to find out right now what we made of. Now that was at halftime. It's basically they've got it. We want it. We have never been in the postseason of the NIT or the NCAA playoffs since we joined Division One in 1990, and they have played their guts out here in the second half. Outscoring Southern Illinois 31 to 19. Nice speech, Bruce. Can that baby? Nine consecutive years, he took his Southern Indiana team for the NCAA playoffs, national title in Division II back in 95. He has gotten the job done at every level, and now only in his second year here, has Milwaukee hoping to be able to hang on for an NCAA ball, NCAA ball. Credit that to Kent Williams. They were so concerned about him. He caused a double team. It was a defensive breakdown. They know the guy that's going to beat him is Williams. They gave him double coverage, and they got burned. The motion offense inside. They will call the shove on Josh Warren. Fouls on 21, Josh Warren. That's Warren's And that's a 17 foul, foul, so they will shoot one and one. Fourth foul on Illinois. Warren, who has been a very physical and presence inside for Southern Illinois. Well, Milwaukee's only 6 for 11 from the foul line today, but Justin Lettenberger is at 76%. And that's a relief for Coach Bruce Pearl. 33, Justin Lettenberger at the line for the Panthers, shooting one plus the bubble. Lettenberger, the true senior forward out of Manitowoc, Wisconsin, has 10 points, 7 rebounds on the day. Him and will make it 11. Him in the program as a walk-in under former Milwaukee coach Bo Ryan, now running the big show for the Badgers. He stayed with the program again. Amazing with all of the young players, seven seniors on this team. And they have demonstrated experience and poise in a tough environment today. And we are all tied up again for the seventh time today. In fact, Milwaukee has not led this game since 12 10 mark of the first half. They got 15 14. It's what Bracket Buster Saturday is all about. The winner of this game is not guaranteed a spot in the tournament, nor the loser denied. It's just a showcase. Turnaround, great rebound by Tucker inside. Transition, out to Frederick, short rebound, Lettenberger. Uh, 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 that's when the breaks are going your way. Friends, that was not a pass. That was an air ball converted. First Milwaukee lead of the second half. And it sucked the air right out of this building. These fans want something to cheer about. Haven't had much since the half. And great defensive effort, but on the line, it'll go back to Southern Illinois. Ronnie Jones almost had a takeaway from Kent Williams. Steps in, checking back in for Southern Illinois. 
Watch this pressure now on Ken Williams Jones. Hey, a little hold in there. Oh, yeah. Grabbing laundry, what was missed. And Terry Anderson, the official, was looking down to see if it was on the line and never saw the hole. That's a breaks. Williams tried to create inside, rolls it off the glass. And that's what he has done so well here for this team for four consecutive years. The only player in Southern Illinois history to lead the team in scoring all four years in a row. And he's amazing because he doesn't have that great foot speed. He just is able to penetrate, take his beating. He wants to get it in the paint. And he's hard to deny, but he doesn't have that kind of physical equipment. Out to Lettenberger from the way outside. And... It'll be Southern Illinois basketball. Bouncing off Lonnie Jones. Let's watch it. Yeah, good call. It's amazing. You know, it's amazing. We look and we get a flash, and the officials, they only see it once. We see it slow-mo replay. Boy, they get it right. They do a phenomenal job. These officials here out of the Horizon League. And a cross-court pass is almost thrown away, and he's on the line. For the turnover, as Corn couldn't get there, it'll be Milwaukee ball. One of the few times the press has forced that long gambling pass. Southern Illinois had no good outlet in the middle, forcing that play. Final minute and 19 seconds, bracket buster Saturday. These two teams wanting recognition, wanting respect, wanting to increase the RPI a little bit. Inside the Tucker, and he is blocked from behind by Dearman. And Bruce Pearl is biting his tongue. He already has one technical. He really wanted to unload on that one. A lot of contact in there. And timeout. And Weber wants a full timeout. He walks back up and says, I need all the time I can get to talk this one over. All tied up in the final minute to play here at Carbon Dell, Illinois. What a game here. Milwaukee into the middle. Bracket Buster Saturday, Bowling Green taking on Illinois Chicago, 5 Eastern Time on ESPN2. Then Hawaii takes on Kent State at 9.30 Eastern Time. And then at midnight, Eastern Kevin Johnson and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane meet Blake Stepp and Gonzaga. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Burke Magnuson Programming Department, along with a lot of very, very helpful conference commissioners, put this idea together to give these schools the heavyweights of the mid-majors a chance to, to get some exposure on Bracket Buster Saturday. 18 teams, nine games. We well, already see. You know, next year at the, at the when the brackets are out in the office, they're going to say, I, I just like this team, not just because they're cute and I like the color, but I heard Dr. Jerry Punch and Bucky Waters, and I've <laughs> liked that team ever since. I don't care if they didn't beat anybody else the rest of the way. Hey, Jim Livengood, the chairman of the NCAA Men's Basketball Committee, said he's intrigued by this whole thing. He said, I'm going to sit and watch all nine basketball games. Wow. So good for Jim. Yeah, well, you better have uh, better have a refrigerator that comes to you, man. That's, that's an endurance test. A lot of popcorn. And that's the whole idea to get some recognition from that selection committee. I got two good friends back in North Carolina that are having health problems. Ryan Rummel and Jimmy Betts, and I want to send Betts to them. And I know they're enjoying this one. How can you not? I think you not love this one. 24-game home court winning streak on the line for Southern Illinois. Milwaukee has won eight in a row. They have not lost since the middle of January. All knotted up. I'm Jerry Punch along with Bucky Waters. Final minute here in Carbondale. Inside, the Deerman looks off the board. Great defense and rebound. And here comes Wisconsin Milwaukee. Both teams have committed seven fouls, so it's a one and one situation. Possession arrow is with Milwaukee. 15 second differential in the shot clock and the game clock. Tucker is their go-to guy inside. Backs in against Brooks, over to Dylan Page, a leading scorer. Shot clock at seven. And Tucker gets a timeout in the air to avoid the over and back call. Tucker's become too unselfish. He was posted up down there in great spot. And when they're giving it up to the big men of Milwaukee, they're wanting to put on the floor, fool around with it. Nothing is happening. 
Tucker is the go-to guy. He can score from in there. He needs to be more assertive. He's the man. Here's a replay of that last possession. At the shot clock at seven, Jones throws the ball wildly into the backcourt. And a great play there by Tucker, who passed up the situation, and he gets an airborne timeout. Uh, 19 seconds of play, Pam Moore. We've got a great one here in Carbondale. Tell you what, Dr. Jerry, it has been a terrific day on Bracket Buster Saturday. We had a one-point win, Creighton over Fresno State. Now Kevin Netter from Bowling Green. We have a good one coming up, Illinois-Chicago, right after your tied ball game. Jeff, what was it at the half? Indeed, uh, Kevin Netter and Bowling Green, the Falcons, headed up to Illinois, Chicago, take on Cedric Banks and company. That's coming up next. I'm Jerry Punch, along with Bucky Waters. Timeouts remaining. Possession arrow favors Milwaukee. And there are only four seconds, by the way, on the shot clock, and Milwaukee will get the ball out at midcourt, so they will have to create in a hurry. I think that's uh, Tucker time. They will find him in there quickly. Quick release, quick penetration. Hoping to draw the foul. Milwaukee, much the better of the timeout situation, but right now it's a, an instinctive thing. These kids are playing on instinct, and they have been pumped all day. What a great performance. Tucker will take it out of bounds. They'll set up the screen, trying to get it, and the ball is uh, tapped out of bounds by Willis. Three seconds on the shot clock. The, the Milwaukee big men are just not assertive, not coming to the ball. Not, it's almost like they don't want it right now. Back to Tucker. That's shot the clock at one. He gets it off, and it rims out. And it'll be Southern Illinois basketball. Weber has one timeout left. 12 seconds to play. I, I like I like what he's doing. I think a timeout right here helps the defense much more than it helps the offense. This girl had a chance to call on the dead ball, and he did not. Final 10 seconds. Brooks trying to penetrate. Clock at 7. 2, 1, and the basket counts. They count the basket. And Southern Illinois has pulled it off. With half a second on the clock, it rolls in. Chris Pearl is trying to get a look on the monitor. He wants the officials to check that call. He's going to have a hard time. Stetson Harrison on the tip end with half a second on the clock. And the officials from the Horizon League said the basket will count. Here's one more look. Watch the, watch the clock. Watch the tip. I think it's good. I think it's good. That's why. Here it goes again. Penetration. Oh, so close. There's the tip. Yeah, yeah. It's off his hand. It's going to be good. And this crowd may get their, their uh, celebration stretched out a little bit here until they absolutely sanction it. But it's good. A great gutsy call. Here's one more look. They're showing us and showing the Horizon League officials there's uh, Lamont Simpson taking a look once again. And big game, Jermaine Deerman gets the tip just as the light goes on. What a finish. The home court streak is continued. The crowd here has been informed that after the replay, it is indeed good. And I'm glad I'm not spending the night in Carbondale. It's going to be wild. And the Salukis of Bruce Weber move to 19 and 5 as they win a fabulous game on their home court and their home court advantage your home court win streak goes to 25 in a row and give a call to bruce pearl what an effort what a comeback by his milwaukee team the panthers a play like that is absolutely justified the way these two teams went at each other today the quick start by milwaukee the sustained comeback by Southern Illinois, and it went right to the wire. Those were the only two points in the second half by Stetson Harrison. Look at Stetson Harrison, number 25. Just taps it in, it bounces, and it is good. And once again, our final score, Southern Illinois 66, Wisconsin, Milwaukee 64.
Let's head back to... What a day for Bracket Buster basketball here. NCAA basketball, our final Southern Illinois, 66 to 64 over Milwaukee. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Now let's head back to our studio and Pam Ward. Pam, what a wild one. Oh.